Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about what's the best choice for an astrophotography camera in 2020. Obviously when you say something like the best astrophotography camera, it's very subjective because the best choice for one person is the worst for another. So this is a high level overview of astrophotography cameras, my experience using them, image examples, pros and cons for each, and with the primary focus being deep sky astrophotography through a telescope. I'll talk about lens stuff too and landscape and nightscapes, but mostly for deep sky imaging through a telescope. First up, you knew it was coming, is a DSLR or mirrorless camera. This one happens to be the Canon EOS 60DA, but for argument's sake, just call this any DSLR, whether it's a Sony, Canon, Nikon, or a mirrorless camera. It's a similar experience. I'm talking about the daytime photography cameras that you can also use obviously with a camera lens for wide angle stuff or through a telescope for deep sky imaging. A DSLR camera or mirrorless is still the way I would recommend a beginner starts the hobby. It's almost a household item. You might already own one of these things for daytime photography and the transition to using it for astrophotography is comfortable. There's a lot of pros to a DSLR or mirrorless camera, including the tactile nature of it and the instant gratification, the LCD screen on the back, you can control everything and it's portable. If you're taking baby steps towards deep sky astrophotography, it's important that you see small steps of progress along the way and you don't get overwhelmed with technical overload. So with a DSLR mirrorless camera, you can use it with your existing lenses and get a star tracker. You can take baby steps towards long exposure deep sky imaging. You can take a full color image in a reasonable amount of time so it's practical. If you've got one or two hours of clear sky time like I do here in Canada, it makes sense to use a DSLR, get that full color image in one night, have something to show for your efforts as opposed to some of these other choices I'm gonna talk about where you really have to work to complete an image. The list of cons for a camera like this is short but also pretty significant. So noise is the biggest one by far. These cameras weren't designed to be shooting for five minutes at a time outside, especially in the summer. They also have a Bayer filter in there to create that full color image at once. So the Bayer filter design is RGB so it filters all of that light coming into the camera, the starlight and your deep sky object, splitting it into those colored buckets. And unfortunately, there's more green than there is R and B, and that's unfortunate for astrophotography because those are some of the colors we want most. We don't want green. So in that sense, they're not optimized for astrophotography, although I think you'd be surprised at how great of a job they can do. The answer to overcoming those hurdles is more exposure time. That offsets the camera's shortcomings in noise and lack of signal collected in a single shot. So if you're willing to put in the exposure time and actually be outside with your camera, which is something I did for so long in astrophotography, one of my favorite parts, a DSLR mirrorless camera is an excellent choice. Next is the dedicated astronomy camera. And I think the middle ground between a DSLR and the far end spectrum camera that I'm gonna talk about is a one shot color dedicated astronomy camera. So this is the ASI 294MC Pro and I dare you to find a better example of a one shot color dedicated astronomy camera than this. I absolutely love this camera. I've taken so many images with it over the last two years. So there's many pros for a camera like this. The biggest difference between this camera and a DSLR or mirrorless camera that you may be used to is that it's just a cool camera. I mean, literally, it's cool. It's, it's, there's cooling inside to make it colder. So that helps with noise, like it's night and day between the noise level in a DSLR camera and a cooled astronomy camera running at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Just the fact that this camera was designed to be shooting for five minutes at a time at night and leaving that shutter open, it is so much better at taking deep sky astrophotography images if you're willing into handle the steep learning curve that comes with a new type of camera like this. So it has advanced settings and potentially a higher dynamic range than you're used to with your DSLR. It's still rather affordable. It's comparable in price to a DSLR mirrorless camera and it's meant for attaching to your telescope. Just look at the design of it, the cylinder shape. So you can actually use these with lenses as well, but really they're designed for deep sky imaging through a telescope. 
the cons with a camera like this. So expect to have more cables, more wires, more accessories involved with the entire imaging experience compared to a DSLR. There's no screen on the back of this thing, obviously. So there's no, you can't just use this camera the way you would with a DSLR mirrorless to focus and frame and do everything and take the picture. You need external software and hardware to run it. So that means that laptops coming outside or a device like the ASI Air needs to be used to actually run the camera. And that's kind of a big deal. Also, the sensors in these cameras are typically smaller than the APS-C or full frame sensors you'd find in a DSLR mirrorless camera. So you might be surprised that the field of view really shrinks down depending on the sensor you use. All in all though, a dedicated astronomy camera, especially a one shot color, does make a lot of sense for those transitioning out of a DSLR that want to go further with their deep sky astrophotography or sick of dealing with noise. It's still a practical choice and rather affordable. So dedicated astronomy camera is another one to consider if you're getting serious about your deep sky imaging. Lastly, we have a monochrome CCD camera. So the last two cameras I talked about were of course CMOS sensors and CMOS sensors have actually come a long way. A modern monochrome CMOS sensor such as the ASI 1600mm is very comparable to a CCD. Now some would argue that, but if you've seen the image results of some people like Chuck's astrophotography, you'll know that it's basically professional quality imaging. And that's where a monochrome camera like this Starlight Express Trius 694 excels. Professional image quality. Noise is virtually non-existent with calibration frames. As far as the image processing stage of astrophotography goes, it's an absolute dream to process images captured with a monochrome camera. The other thing about a monochrome dedicated camera, CCD or CMOS, is that narrowband filters and narrowband imaging from the city is an absolute game changer. If you're in city light pollution, pop in an HA filter with a monochrome CCD camera running at minus 30 degrees Celsius and you're getting exploded with these amazing nebula photos with a full moon and in the city. It just narrowband filters are just incredible. And realistically, you'll want to use a monochrome camera when you use narrowband filters. Even though you can use them with the color cameras, they're just optimized for a monochrome camera like this Starlight Express. The cons of a monochrome CCD camera is that it's probably going to be the most expensive out of the mix. And it's designed for one purpose. So unlike a DSLR camera that you can use for all purpose, daytime photography, use it at night as well. A monochrome CCD is deep sky imaging or nothing. It also has the steepest learning curve. You really have to work for it to complete a full color image and it may, might take multiple nights to complete a project and maybe that's not something you're interested in doing. Also, it will lead to countless other accessories when you get into this level of astrophotography. That means all of a sudden you'll feel like you'll need a motorized focuser because you need to shoot through different filters with this camera to complete a full color image. So you'll need a filter wheel to make it practical to switch between filters throughout the night. So you're not taking the camera out, threading on a new filter. An automated filter wheel will switch between the color filters. So you can do an hour in each color, through a narrowband filter in a night of imaging and just work towards completing an image. So a lot of extra gear involved. Not to mention that you'll, you'll need to take longer exposures with a camera like this. So if you get into longer focal lengths to take a 10 minute tracked exposure it, and with sharp stars, man, your tracking must be perfect. Your guiding must be great. Your mount itself needs to be spot on. So it's a whole new level. It's the most advanced type of astrophotography, that's for sure. It is nothing like the DSLR experience, that point and shoot fun nature of it. So if that's what you love about astrophotography, I suggest spending some more time enjoying that and learning the basics before going straight to a monochrome CCD camera. So I think the, the moral of the story here is that a camera from this side to a camera on this end, they can all do the same thing. They both do a great job but what are your personal expectations? Because someone might be so happy with the results they're getting from a DSLR camera like this, myself included, I'm still blown away with the images captured on DSLR and mirrorless cameras. Cameras like the Canon EOS RA that I used in December are just insane, the image quality that you can get from a multi-use camera like that. 
There are others that will say that it's a monochrome CCD or nothing and you're wasting your time if you're doing anything else. I definitely know what they mean because the image quality is the best out of all three options, but that's not to say that this is the only way to go and I certainly wouldn't recommend this for a beginner. So good luck deciding. Hopefully I've made your decision process even harder than it already was and you're even more confused about astrophotography, but that's why I'm here. Until next time, clear skies. so long you know why because the weather is so bad do you miss being in the videos Rudy, you're still here so every t if I'm filming he's not far behind are you buddy <laughs> Rudy. you stay there hold on you're always right there behind me supporting me Roadie, Roadie, Roadie. I got you. That's my.